um, we're going to go to, everybody go to 2 Peter 1 and 5. 2 Peter 1 and 5. 2 Peter 1 and 5. We've been talking about self-control. We've been talking about the scriptures so long, pretty sure everybody should know about by heart. But we're going to go ahead and read it. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, in view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness. One thing about this self-control is about managing your initial impulses to challenges. Managing your initial impulses to challenges. Managing your initial impulses to challenges. What does that mean? That means when something pops up, I, I don't immediately just react out of who I am because what made me me, but I understand I can control that and I have the ability to let the Christ that lives in me respond how Jesus wants me to respond to. That's how, that's the having control over what triggers you. It's control over your triggers. Self-control is control over your triggers. We all got triggers. We all got things that set us off. We all got, all got things that we don't like that people do, whether if somebody might jump at us, somebody might yell at us, somebody might talk down to us, but whatever, or somebody might just do something to one of our family members. We got stuff that, that'll set us off. But self-control is the thing that manages the trigger. What manages how we handle things. Cause see, we, speaking of triggers, we all have daily situations in life that challenge our behavior. It challenges us. It's our family, our jobs, our work, our life. What, well, all these things. The person that jumps out of line in front of you, you standing in line, everybody's standing in line, and this one person just gonna kind of mosey up themselves and gonna break the line, and you're gonna see they're gonna bring like four or five other people. They're gonna do like this. I'm like, wait a minute, you already breaking illegally. Well, what do we wanna do? Some of us wanna get him a piece of our mind. We wanna step up there. Or, like the car that cut you off, we all be driving and you see the car, it's, it shows a little lane where the car is merging in. The two lanes is going into one. They got the big arrow sign out there and everybody is getting, it got to a point where everybody has gotten over the one lane. Now you got that one car that comes flying way up, like 16 cars past you and then they're going to try to get up there and put their signal on like we're supposed to let them in. Again, the triggers or that kind of sending person that um, that that uses their position of authority to look down on others because of their need for control and power. Yes, I'm in this spot. Uh, yes, I'm the manager. I'm in charge. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you say or what you do. I don't care about your opinions. It's all about me because I am the one in control. I got authority. I got the title. What do we want to do to the folks? We want to really get them a piece of our mind. You say, oh, oh y'all want to belittle me? Well, let me tell you a thing or two. Self-control. Self-control. Again, handling things like Christ. Handling things like, like try Christ. Or, I'm going to take a sip of this little drink. Just one little sip. One little sip of this drink. We're talking about why the, our triggers. I'm going to drink one little sip of this drink, and they're going to drink no more. And knowing good and well, we, we take a sip of that drink, it's going to be like eating Lay's potato chips. Nobody can't just take just one. I ain't gonna, I'm going to take one, then I will. That one didn't really hit me that bad, so I'm going to do two. That two didn't really work. I'm going to hit three. The next thing you know, you're out of control. But again, tri these triggers... Self-control helps you manage your initial impulses to challenges. These triggers in our daily situation. And anyway, it's situations like this where we have to exercise self-control. What is self-control? Self-control is the discipline to override your natural behavior. The discipline to override your natural behavior and respond, respond the way God wants us to. Can you turn the other cheek when somebody says something crazy about you? Can you give a soft answer to somebody yelling at you? Can you get away from the things that get you caught up? You know, whenever you go around a certain something, you act a certain way. You go around a certain person, you act a certain way. Can you resist? Do you have the ability to restrain? Do you have the ability when you know they come around and you know when I get to hang out with Jimmy, y'all know what we do when we get together. But do I know, oh, there come Jimmy, ah, oh, I don't really need to be around him right now. Can you, do you have the ability to resist, restrain yourself? But again, these are things that control helps. Everybody go to 2 Corinthians 10 and 3. 
Self-control, self-control, the discipline to override our natural play behavior, the discipline to override our natural behavior. It reads this. I'm going to read verse 3 through 5 in the King, New King James Version. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, for though we walk in the flesh, in other words, these bodies that we live in, we do not war according to the flesh. We don't war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Self-control, self-control, not warring against the flesh. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means we don't fight fire with fire. We'll stop one up in people. We got if they go, if they do something to you, we'll see if they're going to get me. I'm going to get them back, but I'm going to get them back even more. We, we, it's like we like to one up whatever's done to us. Somebody spit on me. Boy, I'm going to put that thing on you. But we like to one up people. Again, self-control is needed. We don't stoop down to their level of op opposition, but we maintain the standard that Christ has because he lives in us. We don't fight fire with fire. We fight. You know how we fight fire? We fight fire with water. When, and what is the water? This is the Holy Spirit. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. In other words, we don't go tick for tack with person, but we respond in the way that Christ has us respond. Ephesians, everybody go to Ephesians 6 and 12. We are another familiar passage of scripture in the New King James Version. We should all, we all should probably be able to quote this too. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Again, we ain't fighting against people. It says, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places, against principalities. These are like demonic, these are like demonic angels that rule over other demonic angels. Against powers, these are people of um, demonic evil forces of influence. They influence areas. Um, Rulers of the darkness of this age, people that the enemy has put in place, that the enemy has put in place to, to rule over a certain area. Again, that, but all these people and the spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. In other words, stuff to cause you malice, stuff to cause you harm. But the enemy set all this stuff up and we think it's the people. It's not the people. That's not where our battle is. That's why we need self-control. Because self-control will cause us to take somebody else's life. The lack of self-control will cause us to take somebody else's life because of the influence of the enemy over their life. The enemy will influence people to do wrong things, and when they, may, and they do that wrong thing to you, you take that to heart. You don't like to feel it, so you retaliate. But because they were weak in the spirit, because they didn't understand you didn't take no thought for that. You took for that what that person did to me, not factoring in that this is not a this is not a flesh and blood battle. This is a spiritual battle. So we have to understand we need self-control to we need self-control to know how to contain ourselves, to handle ourselves. Because the enemy will use whatever and whoever he will to attack your state of mind. He can't do nothing about your state of being. Who you are, you you self, you saved, God is you've been redeemed. Oh yeah, you 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 you're Christ like now. You when when Jesus come back, you going back with him. So, enemy say, mm, I can't do nothing about that, but if I can make them believe they're not that. I'll do that. So he will use whatever he can, whatever that thing that you like to do when ain't nobody else around that you go to, that's your thing that you hold back in secret. God sees it, but nobody else sees it. But you think you're safe because nobody sees it. But anyway, that thing that you like to do or that person you like to be around or that person you be with. But again, the enemy will use whosoever or whatever makes you weak. Whoever makes you weak or whatever makes you weak. Again, the person, the, we're talking about the triggers. This is why self-control is needed to be more like Jesus. Self-control, again, disciplines us to respond to the way Jesus intended. Um, self-control is to refuse and follow and do away with the nature of the flesh. Refuse to follow and do away with the nature of the flesh. As believers, we're no longer under the dominion of the flesh and possess the ability to control our behavior. Because, but because we're new creatures, that means, hey, before we, before we weren't new creatures and we were still blind and sin, we had no power over us. 
The enemy, again, it was the power and dominion of the sin. Sin has dom dominion and power over how we think, how we act, how we do for the ones who are not saved and haven't accepted Jesus. Well, when you become blood washed, you become a new creature. That's no longer a factor for you because the truth has made you free. You are liberated. Your mind is free to choose how you want to. You don't have to be stuck by what the enemy says. And we have, because see, one thing we have to understand, we have to lay aside any distraction, hindrance, obstacle, or whatever will trigger us to act out of the character um, of Christ living in us. Um, everybody go with me to Hebrews 12. We're talking about self-control, refusing to follow and do away with the nature of the flesh. What does that mean? That means deny yourself. You have to deny yourself. You have to deny yourself. You have to desire. Now, we, we do live in a fleshly body. We do live in a fleshly body. But we have to deny that flesh. We have to say, hey, yes, I do. I recognize I live in you, but I don't answer to you. You don't have no authority over me. That's what it means by self-control. That's why we need self-control. We can't walk in love if we don't have self-control. We can't walk in peace if we don't have self-control. We can't walk in patience if we don't have self-control. We can't walk in faith if we don't have self-control because we don't have anything to keep us rooted and grounded and understand the discipline to submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit and allow him to operate through us. Hebrews 12 and 1 of the King James Version says this, Wherefore sin, we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. So many different other people that say they believe in the faith. Let us lay aside every weight, every weight, every weight, and the sin. What is, what is the weight? What is the weight? What is the weight that we got to lay aside? The weight is, the, is our hangups. We got to, now get this, some people say, because the scripture says lay aside every weight, and the sin which does so easily beset us. So a weight and a sin. So that means a weight is different from the sin. The weight is something that's not, is, uh, is not a sin, but it's ungodly. But it will lead to the sin. So in other words, you got to get rid of anything that would cause you to, to be a distraction or a hindrance and get it out of the way. We're talking about refuse to follow and do away with the nature of the flesh. Get away these things that you know that's good to you, but not good for you. You can't be around it. Oh, man, it's good to me. Because I don't know. I heard somebody say this a long time ago. They said, sin don't feel good. Well, yes, it does. <laughs> Why do you think you keep doing it? <laughs> well, but the thing is, God says, no, it might feel good. It feels good to your flesh, but it's not good to your spirit. It feels good to the flesh, but it doesn't feel good to the spirit. What feels good to the spirit don't feel good to the flesh. What feels good to the flesh don't feel good to the spirit. So again, do those things which we, um, we got to lay aside every way and do those things that don't set us back, but set us. And it says, let's look at verse number two, looking unto Jesus. In other words, staying focused on Jesus. And it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith author of our faith. In other words, he's the originator of the faith. He is the one who established our faith. He is the one who made it possible. He is the creator of it. And the finisher of our faith, the one who makes us complete. The one who makes us complete. The one that if, we, if it weren't for him, we wouldn't, have, we wouldn't have our faith fundamentals. We wouldn't have our love, joy, peace. If it weren't for him, we wouldn't have the fruit. We wouldn't have the Holy Spirit. We wouldn't have the armor. We wouldn't have, have all these things. But he is the finisher of our faith. The one that makes us all complete, that brings these together. Now listen to this. It says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. We should never allow our carnal nature to dictate, to dictate our actions. We got to deny ourselves. Self-control allows us to do that. Self-control allows us to deny who we want to be and be who God wants us to be. Self-control allows us to deny who we want to be and allow who God wants us to be. Another point, point number two, self-control is to submit our will to the Holy Spirit. 
Submit our will to the Holy Spirit. One thing about it, the Holy Spirit was given to us to govern our to govern us. That's what our identity is. It's when Jesus come back, he's not coming back for the fruits that you've done. He's coming back for identity. He wants to see, is my identity in you? Do I see love, joy, peace, and long suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith, temperance against such as the law? Do I see all that in you? Or do I see hate? This um, hate, adultery, fear, doubt, disbelief, um, lasciviousness. Do I, see, do I see all these other things? What do I see when I look at your heart? Well, again, when we submit to the Holy Spirit, when we submit to the Holy Spirit, that's when we, he can govern our actions. He, he governs our behavior. We said this last week when we looked in the book of Galatians. Out of, all, out of all the fruit of the Spirit, the last one was temperance or self-control. Because temperance is the ones, temperance is the one part of the Spirit that keeps the, all the other ones in line, keeps it in check. With, with, te with temperance, with self-control, you know how to love. You know, you know how joy, you know peace, you know all these things. Self-control is on the end of it. It's like that, the final, the final, um, the final piece to the, um, the puzzle. But submitting our will means that we surrender our authority and allow the Holy Spirit. What does that mean, surrender our authority? God has made us, given us the power of choice because he's given us the power of choice. We got the authority to choose what we want to do. That's the Bible says, hey, look, I sit before you life and death, but I'd rather you choose life, but you could choose death. But how do, how do we choose death? We choose death by not accepting Jesus. We choose death by not accepting Jesus. We choose death by not doing what God says to um, do what we want to, do what he says. As I submit myself to Christ, the more his character lives in me. The more I submit, the more his character lives. The less I submit, the less his character lives. The more I submit, the more and more I walk in the newness of the divine nature that God has given me to live a godly life. The less I submit, the more I go back to what I used to do. There's this, um, I saw this glass and the Holy Spirit gave me this picture of this glass. And in this glass was a cup of water. And in the cup of water, the water was almost filled up to the top. But he showed me something with that. When I got that, I got the revelation. The more that you put God in you, the less room you have for the enemy to work. The more you get in there, the less enemy you have to work. And so when I saw that glass, you know, we always talk about the glass half full or half empty. Well, the more you fill up with the things of God, the less room you have. Again, when the, the Bible says, thou anoints my head with oil, my cup runneth over. When you, when you run over with the Holy Spirit, there's no room for the enemy to come in. No room left. Because now God is just pouring so much in. Now that's when you start affecting the people around you. If you want to see how much, if you want to see how much, Holy, how much Holy Spirit and how much his fruit is operating in your life, Look at those around you. See how much you affect around you. If you got a little small circle that's around you affected, um, that, means, um, that means you need to get more of the Holy Spirit in you. If you got a lot of people around you affected and everybody just talking about, oh, such and such, I thank you so much, John, for helping me out. I thank you for this. And everybody has something to say. Everybody has something good to say. Again, that is overflowing. But if you ain't affecting nobody around you or people just don't want to be around you, check your cup. Check your cup. Because we might not, hey, we might think we overflowing with love. And actually, we, we think we got this much love in our cup, and we got about that much. Because everything else is us. Again, submitting our will to the Holy Spirit. Gal everybody go to Galatians 2 and 20. Galatians 2 and 20. It says, of the King James Version, I have been crucified with Christ. What does that mean? When Jesus went to the cross... And he was crucified and he took our sins with him. That means our old self went with him too. our old self. Now, listen to this. It is no longer I who live. So it's not about what I want anymore because I got I my old self got crucified on the cross with Christ. And it says, but Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. Everybody say, man, Christ lives in me. And then for some of the technical people, how can Christ live in you but Christ died? Well, guess what? He does that through his Holy Spirit. Christ lives in us through the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit. That's Christ living in you. And anyway, it says, and, and, the, life now, the, and the life which I now live in the flesh. You know, I'm going to go back to the top. I haven't been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me. 
And the life which I now live in the flesh, which is in my body, I live by faith in the Son of God. I live by faith in the Son of God. I live by faith. Who is the Son of God? Jesus. I live by faith in Jesus. I live by faith in Jesus. How do I live by faith in Jesus? Because now I take his faith fundamentals with now. I understand that the fruit of the Spirit governs my character. I understand that the gifts are given me to help equip me for the work. I understand that his truth liberates my mind so I can have a free mind to think. I understand the armor protects me with the spiritual warfare that goes on and the battle of my mind that I have that I'm not caught up and I might not think it's the person, but I understand who's bringing the issue. So again, I live by faith in the Son of God. And what the faith is in the Son of God, I don't believe in my ability. I trust in the ability in God. Faith is the trust in God's ability, not the trust in our ability. Now listen to the last part. Who loved me and gave himself for me? He loved me because he loved me so much and gave himself for me. The least I can do is let him live in me. Because he took all these things. Everybody stand to your feet. He took all these things away. He took all our old beliefs. He took our old beliefs away. He took all our opinions away. He took away us from being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, slight of men, and all these people that got these different religions, these different beliefs, these different philosophies. He said, I took all that away. When, when I couldn't make up my mind on where I wanted to be, if I wanted to be, if I wanted to be a Muslim today, if I wanted to be a Seventh day Adventist tomorrow, if I wanted to be a, a Nation of Islam the next day, if I wanted to be a Buddhist the next day, but whatever I wanted to be that wasn't according to Christ's life, he said, I took that all away. I took away your indecisiveness and gave you something to stand on because he lives in us. When we submit to the Holy Spirit living in us, we will respond the way Jesus wanted us to do. And that's all he wants us to do. That's why it's important that we have self-control because when we have self-control, we learn to deny our fleshly self. When we have self-control, the next part of that, we understand, okay, first, now I've denied myself. Since I've denied myself and what I want, it gives me an ability now I can submit to the Holy Spirit. And now since I can submit to the Holy Spirit, now I can I humble myself that the Holy Spirit may work through me. And God can work through me and Jesus can work with me. And so now I can respond to those things that come. The person that cuts me off in the traffic that I want to flip off for something ain't got to do that now because their actions doesn't affect who I am. I can once that person get up in front of the line and they break that line in front of me. I ain't got to cuss them out. Well, I ain't got to cuss <laughs> because of the Holy Spirit, because of the self-control. When that person is condescending and talk down on me, I don't, have, I don't have anything to prove to them because I have, I have self-control. I have self-control. And the more and more we, the more and more we have self-control, the more and more we have self-control, the more and more we allow God to operate within us, God to operate in us, the more and more we have self-control, the best way we can influence other people, other people's character, is how you regulate. How you regulate yours. How you act yourself. How you live. How do you respond to things? Man, because trust me, people are watching. We all have our individual circles that's around us of influence. People are watching. And they see how do you respond to things. How do you respond to things? Okay, they saved. I know I ain't practicing. I ain't know. I know I ain't praying and going to church like they are or living like they are. But I'm gonna watch Jimmy see what he do. I'm gonna watch Aunt cause Aunt, hey, at least I know Aunt don't do some of the stuff I do. So they watching. So when they watching, are you regulating? Are you doing things in moderation? Do you have control? Again, and when you do those, it affects others. Again, this is how. The anointing flows on you and overflows to somebody else because now they see your fruit and they say, you know what? Oh, OK, then I see their fruit. I, I need to do the same thing because see one thing we can never let a, another person's arrogant pride touch our ego. Never let a person never let another person's arrogant pride touch your ego. What is that? That's what is your ego? Your sense of worth. In other words, 
they think that you less than anything or you ain't worth worth nothing. You know who you are, but you don't like the way they said it. So you want to just jump out at them. No, self-control teach, teaches you that. Again, the way Christ responded. Look at Christ. He went to the cross for our sins. They talked about him. They disgraced him. They blasphemed against him. They did everything possible thing they did. Oh, man, if, you, if you're the Christ, get down off that cross then. <laughs> I didn't think you could anyway. Imagine the ridicule. But self-control. He knew who he was. That contentment in Christ. The contentment in Christ knew who he was because of self-control. God, I thank you for this word. We thank you for teaching us about self-control. We thank you for teaching us about how to submit our will to the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you for teaching us how to deny ourselves. God, let your word become a part of us, that we can walk in the divine nature, and that we can walk in the Christ-like behavior. That's him living in us by through his Holy Spirit. And we thank you for this day. We thank you for this word, that we will continue to be your students and continue in your word to be your disciples and let others know of your goodness by our actions and we continue to give the praise because all the glory belongs to you in Jesus name we pray amen we thank everybody for joining us here at the Pillar Church we ask you to come and fellowship with us every Sunday at 10 o'clock at 6116 Mapleton Parkway in Mapleton Georgia located right inside the compliment salon and also we do have something very special for everybody every Wednesday at 730 we go over faith fundamentals what is faith fundamentals faith fundamentals is a Bible class about understanding the provision of God what is the provision of God what is does this love do for us what does his truth do for us what does his gifts do for us what does his spirit do for us in other words these principles understanding the foundational things that we need to live a godly life and we cover those for about an hour and you can come and join us in person or either online at the Pillar Church Mableton or um, the Pillar Church Mableton on YouTube or Facebook or you can join us or either come and ask to join us on our Zoom link where you can interact with us and ask questions. It's, and this is not a lecture, but this is a back and forth question. If you got questions, let's talk about it. Let's see what the word says about these faith fundamentals because we need to get understanding, but not as by our own understanding, but it's the understanding that God has for us. But we actually encourage you, every one of you, to come and join us on Wednesday nights. And always remember to love and pass it on. God bless you all.